welcome to another edition of News 6. This week's News 6 is brought to you by Mrs. Logan's and Mr. Archer's 6th grade class at Shawnee Middle School in Lima, Ohio. Later on in the show, we'll visit the Lima Army Tank Center and we'll learn about some interesting activities that students participate in here at school. We'll also visit a local blacksmith shop. But first, Kevin Talley is going to tell us about a 6th grade gymnast. Kevin? Gymnastics is a sport of strength and skill. There is a very talented gymnast here at our school. Her name is Michelle Strobel, and she is one of the top gymnasts at the Lima Gymnastics Academy. Jody Goodwin recently talked with Michelle about what it's like to be an 11-year-old gymnast. Michelle, where did you start gymnastics, and at what age? I started at Mary Blanche at age 5. We meet at the academy at 4, 4.30, or maybe 5 and we go warm up, go through routines and conditions sometimes, and that takes up to maybe three, three and a half or four hours. Have you won many trophies and medals? Yes, these trophies are the all-around trophies, and the medals that I've got on are for just the events, the scores that I've got. Have you traveled to many areas in the United States? We've only traveled around Ohio. The farthest we went was Youngstown, near Pennsylvania. Do you want to be on the high school gymnastic team? I would like to be on both, because I like competition. This is Jody Goodwin reporting for News 6. Thanks, Jody. And now John Duvall is going to tell us about the Abrams Army tank. John? The Abrams Army Tank is named after General Wrighton Abrams, who is the former Army Chief of Staff and Commander of the United States Forces in Vietnam. The parts for the battle tank come from all over North America, and the tank is assembled at the Lima Tank Plant. The Abrams Tank has new high-technology features, which include blow-off panels and an automatic fire detection system. The tank is also capable of putting out a smoke screen. News 6 visited the Lima Army Tank Plant and talked with Mr. Benjamin DiCenzo about the capabilities of this modern weapon. The M1 tank is designed to have a top speed of 45 miles an hour. Okay. It can go 35 miles an hour in cross-country terrain. To operate the M1 vehicle requires a crew of four. Okay. One is a driver and his position is in the hull. The other three members, there's a tank commander and he controls the vehicle. Then we have a loader. His job is to load the main weapon, and then we have a gunner. He aims and shoots the main weapon. Now, my name is uh, Mr. DiCenzo, and I am the uh, deputy commander for the Lima Army Tank Plant. And I work for the United States Army. Okay. Our job is to inspect these vehicles after General Dynamics gets done building them, and we make the final acceptance for the Army, steering the tank, is very simple. Okay. You have inside the tank what we call a T-bar with a grip on either side which the driver grasps. So if I want to go faster I just twist these grips towards me. If I want to slow down I twist them away. If I want to go right I turn the T-bar to the right. If I want to go left I'll turn the T-bar to the left. Okay. The transmission is fully automatic. There's no clutch involved. So the driver merely has this T-bar and a brake. Those are the only two major controls that he has to concern himself with. Thanks, John. And now Vicki Bansell is going to tell us about some extracurricular activities here at Shawnee. Vicki? Eighth graders here at our school are learning a skill that may someday save someone's life. Under the direction of Mr. Howison, these students are learning CPR, or cardi cardiopulmonary resuscitation. The students practice on a model and on each other. The entire eighth grade class spends two weeks learning CPR. At the end of the session, they are given a Red Cross card that certifies that they have learned CPR. 
Students at our school are also learning another useful skill, how to use computers. The school recently received four new computers. They are being used for typing in the names and grade levels of the students and are also being used in classroom studies. The computers are located in different school offices and in the library. The students help out by typing in the names and the grade levels of the, for the staff. They are proud to be part of the computer age. Shawnee School is named after the Shawnee Indians. These Indians once roamed a swamp where our school stands now. Many of our activities relate to the Indians, such as our yearbook, which is called The Arrow, and school newspaper, The Brave. Our head cheerleader is called The Squaw. Her outfit is different from the other cheerleaders. She wears moccasins and a short cloth dress with a design on it. The symbol of the four schools in our system is the Shawnee Indian. Thanks, Vicki. Our last story is about an art teacher in our school and what he does in his spare time. Here's Kim Terry to tell us about it. Kim? Mr. Joe Ponisis has been a blacksmith for the last six years, unlike the traditional village blacksmith. Mr. Boniface uses his hammer and anvil to create artistic pieces. He has exhibited his creations as far away as California. One of the largest things he has ever made is a set of wrought iron gates that hang at the Lima Art Museum. News 6 recently visited the blacksmith shop at Mr. Boniface where he showed us how he practices his craft. Uh, hi, my name is Joe Boniface and I'm a blacksmith here in Lima, Ohio. Uh, the name of my shop is the Black Oak Forge. The Black Oak Forge sort of stemmed out of the area with the black oaks around. What I'm going to be demonstrating today is just a general process of forging, that is hammering the metal in the uh, forge and on the anvil. This is an anvil. This particular anvil weighs about 338 pounds. Where does the name blacksmith come from? The term blacksmith is actually two words put together, the black being the part of the metal that you're working and smith being the word uh, talking about a person working metal. So a tin smith would be an individual who works with tin. A copper smith would be a person who works with copper. So the first word kind of indicates the metal that you're working with. A blacksmith works with black metal. The whole reason you heat up the metal is so that you can get the metal in a softened state because normally metal being very hard, you've got to heat it up. So consequently, heating it up makes it very soft and it turns it into like a clay form so you can hammer on it and shape it. This particular hammer I made just by taking the metal and hammering it, as you saw me hammer before with the um, piece, the long piece. The only thing that the blacksmith really can't make is an anvil. From if he has an anvil and at least one hammer, with that he can make anything. Thank you, Mr. Wanifus. This is Janine and Lloyd reporting for News 6. Thanks, Renan. That's all for today. We hope you'd enjoy the show. Join us next week when News 6 will be brought to you by the 6th graders at Good Shepherd School in Toledo, Ohio. Until then, have a good week.